Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea conversation, and this is going to be a fun one. I call this the power move. We're going to be correcting the industrial skills gap. And to have us walk through this conversation, we have Tom Dimitrovich, who is the Vice President of Technical Sales at Eaton. So welcome, Tom. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you, man. Very excited to have you. I'm, I'm so glad you've, you've come highly I recommend it as well to connect with. So we had a couple of our Eaton guests on here, and they're like, "Man, you got to talk to Tom. He's he's got it going on over there." You know, you don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I'm I'm really looking forward to this conversation because I feel like everyone that we talk to on Eco asks why when we talk about the challenges of the industry, uh, it constantly comes up about the skills gap and you know trying to get people in these plants and in these manufacturing environments and uh so it's definitely an exciting topic i'm, I'm looking forward to it and the work you're doing is just amazing and for our listeners we'll have all the links to tom and, and what he's doing because I, I know he you just do phenomenal videos and, and content that you're putting out there and maybe start us off but why do you think it's so important to teach others about these topics and to, and to raise that level of awareness it, it, where I come from, uh, from my perspective, it's it it's all rooted in electrical safety. So, you know, in, in my my end goal is is a passion around safety, and I think it starts with an education. Um, but I do like to share information, and I like to create platforms and environments for that. Um, and and that's sort of uh, you know why I do what I do in regard to uh, all of the the videos that you talked about. Um, but yeah, I think it all has to uh, have an end goal of uh, increasing electrical safety. I hear you. I mean, in increasing safety, and you're pretty innovative with how you're doing it. Maybe share with us how you're how you've gone about that, because man, the, the virtual things that I'm seeing you do online are are just amazing. Well, I appreciate that. I I'll tell you what. I uh, usually I'm in the air. I usually travel about 85 percent of the time, and I'm either with customers or. And, and and if I if I'm out with a customer, I try to uh, do educational programs uh, with organizations like the International Association of Electrical Inspectors, very in, involved with that organization, and um, they provide you know they have meetings and all that good stuff. So I would do a lot of traveling, but then when COVID hit, here I was stuck in my basement, right, and in, in my in my house. I'm not allowed to go into work, a lot, not allowed to get into a plane, not allowed to go to a hotel. Um, so. I felt like if I didn't do something, I was going to be disconnected. And I'll tell you, I learned a lot about how to uh, share information on the web. I was doing first, uh, what do they call those, uh, WebEx. We used to do use WebEx. We've moved to Teams and, you know, we've got Zoom and all these different platforms. So I was learning that. When I did my very first program, I had 950 people on a WebEx. And you try to hold and, and mute people we know because what happens is, you know, you have that one hot mic and then they're talking and then they're moving and you hear the clothing and you're like, oh, man. So I was playing whack-a-mole with that. And I, I had that, the concept that I said, I wonder about YouTube. And I started to learn from kids who were streaming. I found out that there's a whole group of individuals out there that uh, game and they stream their games. Well, you can learn how to do that. And it's and it's free. I mean, it was, uh, you know, the YouTube site was free. The software I was using was free and I had all the material. And then what I learned, Chris, was there are a lot of people out there that have never seen my material, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm teaching on uh, national electrical code, safe work practices. And when I would travel, if I did a chapter meeting for the International Association of Electrical Inspectors, you pretty much saw the same people who were there. And I learned that there are a lot of people that sit in there at their jobs that aren't allowed to go to those meetings because they're on a job site and I don't have time to record and edit. Mm -hmm. So I just say, I'm going live, I'm going out on a limb and, um, and just share uh, information. So that, that's how it all got started. And I'll tell you what, I've created a lot of material over the year. Yeah. And I've watched my, my first few videos again, embarrassing. <laughs> I could not believe I had 900 people who was actually, who were actually watching that, you know, right? right. <laughs> but um, we have to yeah. learn, man. We all have to learn, you know, uh, you know what? And that, that, and that's the thing. So, so you look at that and say, you know, you have a lot of information that people apparently are liking, right? Cause I've gotten a lot of good feedback. 
uh, about uh, not just you know like the platform and 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 whatnot. It's the the actual material because exactly. it's it's material that has grown over the years. Because whenever you know you do an educational program, and then someone comes up to you and says, "I like that," but and then and you listen to them and then you improve it, uh, or or they'll tell you their stories and then you share those with others because we learn from each other, right? Mm -hmm. It's if you ever think that you are you can live in a vacuum, and uh, and progress, uh, that's just the wrong attitude, mm -hmm. especially with what we do, right? For sure, for sure. So, so it sounds like a lot of your your topics and the things that you're talking about and that you want to create, you're taking that feedback directly from your audience and from your the people that's consuming it, and you're Absolutely. custom custom tailoring it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is, um, I, I'll, I'll give you one example photovoltaics, right? So years ago, I was driving from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and there was a whole bunch of us in a vehicle and I get a phone call and the guy says, Hey, can you come up here to Michigan and do a program on photovoltaics? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, great. So I hung up and the guy sitting next to me, he goes, what do you know about PV? I'm like, well, not much right now, but he doesn't need me for about another six months. So we picked the date and I got six months to learn PV. So I'm going to immerse myself in that topic because I should know. I mean, I know, I know enough to be dangerous. Right. And, and then I called Dan Carnavalli up at the experience center and I say, Hey Dan, what do you got going on on PV? And he's like, well, we have a class coming here from Penn state, you know, why don't you come on up? So I sat in that class and then I found an electrical inspector and I started going on inspections with him on roofs and whatnot. And we were looking at, and he was teaching me, and then I just take all of that information and I go back to the house. I, I write it down. I take really good notes and I'm learning. And then what I do is I share what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I might have somebody in the audience who knows even more. And then I give that person the platform to say, Hey, why don't you, you know, I'll say, here's what I know. And uh, does anybody else have any feedback? And then you start to get the audience sharing their information. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than hosting an educational platform where you're teaching somebody and then you can sit down at the front of the class and watch another student who's in the audience stand up and share their experiences. And then you watch the dialogue in the room. It is a magical moment because now you're not the teacher. And that's, you know, that's the thing. I always tell people, I'm not here to teach you something. I'm here to facilitate everybody learning together all right and we're all going to walk out of this room a little smarter than when we walked in including me man that is so awesome that is great it works it, it does works. work now yep. you, you know since you've made that you've had to make a pretty significant adjustment because you, with the pandemic yeah. you're doing a lot more virtually now so what what feedback or metrics are you looking at to see what's really working to help kind of give you an idea of where you need to go next so I, I have bounced around the metric thing. Okay. I originally was looking at how many people I have, right? Like how many people are subscribed to the YouTube channel? How many people are following me on LinkedIn or Facebook? And um, I'm, I'm learning that I don't know that that's a good measure because just how many people you have in the audience is not good enough in my opinion so now what i'm trying to do is try to i need that engagement you know when i'm in a room and i have a i've got uh you know whether it be you know 30 people in the audience or 300 people in the audience what you want is you want everybody to start communicating so i i'm trying to drive more chats because you know in the youtube the, the youtube platform has some pluses and minuses the pluses are that I don't have to play whack-a-mole and, and mute people, right? right? The minus is that I can't talk to people. They can't voice what they want to say. So I have to watch the chat. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to figure out are what are the ways that I can get people to engage on the other side so that it's not me uh, just talking to a camera, it's more of a conversation. Uh, I can't see them, you know, unless I bring the whole WebEx thing in. And right. if you have two people you're doing a presentation with, it's a little easier. Yeah. So the chat box, I'm trying to measure how much dialogue we're getting, how much, what kind of questions. If I do a presentation and there are no questions, 
then you really have to question whether or not you've done anything. Right. right? So I'm trying to figure out tools to get the dialogue up. I know I'm seeing an, a, a more emails come in with questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have, uh, you, you, I'll get the, I'll get the email. Hey, I'm working on a project and the one line diagram. Right. And it gets a, to be honest, it, it's, it's like, well, I can't handle the volume yeah. of yeah. emails. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting some of our field salespeople involved that I know are very educated on the different topics. Yeah. So I take that and I say, Hey, you know what? I don't know if I can answer this right now, but I know a really smart guy who is like right in your backyard and I marry those people together. And then eventually I'll get that email back that says, wow, really appreciate it. Thanks for connecting me. So I say I'm only as smart as the as the uh, slowest person in my Rolodex, right? Right, right. <laughs> now, so, are you doing this these videos and stuff on your own when you do this? I mean, is it kind of you running the show or do you have somebody there helping you monitor the I chats? Am a one I am a one man band. I'll tell you what. So the first one I did, I had my laptop and I have a little HP laptop. That's like one of those real thin ones because I travel a lot. So I had it propped up on, I, I, I weld, right? So I welded up a metal platform so I could, I could prop it up and, and it's magnetic because the way the, uh, they have like one of those magnetic pens. So it was nice because it would magnetically hold itself to the steel and I would put my monitor up and I used that and, uh, but I learned, you know, like flipping through screens because I had that monitor and an extra monitor. Actually, I had two TVs. Okay. I grabbed two flat screen TVs and I put them into my little, uh, the little hub that they give you with the computer. And, and so I had the two televisions and my monitor and uh, it became hard to flip between screens and, and play whack-a-mole with everything. So once I went to YouTube, I bought three monitors. I bought a desktop computer instead of a laptop. And then I bought this thing called a stream deck that lets me flip between screens. And now I really don't need, I don't need somebody with the camera because I've got my camera and I've got my green screen and it's, it's really simple. It's, it is so easy to go live and record stuff. And I think this just be, I don't know. I, I, I wish I would have learned it a long time ago because I could have probably have been sharing a lot more information with people who won't go to events or can't go right. to an event. Right. You know, exactly. You, you think about it. If you're looking at a bunch of con electrical contractors in your audience, mm -hmm. do you think they are the first year apprentices that, that were work for those organizations? No, you're talking to, you're talking to the owners, you're talking to a lot of individuals who you would think, you know, from an Eden perspective, those are the people I want to build relationships with because they're the ones with the wallets, they're the ones who are going to buy things. But I am more focused on electrical safety. So you want the person who is going to be turning this, the, the screwdriver, right. who's on that job site. And, and, you know, you're hoping that you teach the owner or the people that are more seasoned and they go back and share that information, but getting to that person who's on a job site, who probably wouldn't get paid to go to a, what do we call those boondoggles, right? <laughs> to go to some nice hotel and, and, and get CEU credits or whatever. Right. Those are the other, the other guys are the, who you really, if you want to impact electrical safety, you want to get to the guy who's carrying the bell you know, no or, kidding. or the electrical engineer, cause I've been focusing a lot on, on engineers, the young engineer who's out of college probably didn't get a lot of power systems training, knows uh, the fundamentals, mm -hmm. but um, doesn't know the national electrical code. We don't get taught the national electrical code in college. You know, if the design engineer takes a safety by design principle, it sets up the electrical worker to leverage whatever was that was put into the system. So if I can get to those young engineers who are laying out systems who probably won't travel to a, to a hotel to watch an event, yeah. I think I'm, I'm doing something right. You know, what about, you know, success stories, Dan, I'm sure you've had some with the pandemic and, and you're, you're out there so much. And what, what have you heard? Any feedback that you'd like to share about, you know, you, you were able to connect the dots for uh, some individuals may be watching around a certain topic and it helped them get past this, uh, maybe a problem they were having with a project or something? What I'm learning is when I went online, I'm talking to a lot of younger engineers. 
who are very appreciative of a lot of the materials around power systems because, like I said, they didn't get a lot of that. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions on projects about some of the safety by design principles that I put in place uh, that I'm teaching on. You know, I've gotten I've gotten some you know customer or, or a sales office who said, hey, you know, this customer wanted to buy our product because he's been watching your YouTube channel. Good job, right? Um, and I, I, but I don't measure. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm odd. I'm, I'm vice president of sales. You would think I would measure my success on sales, right? And and I try to measure my success on other things, safety related. For example, for this whole pandemic, I, I, like I said, I was doing, going around teaching, right? Mm-hmm. And I had an electrician come up to me after I presented one time and he gave me this, and I, I have it on my keychain. I still have it on my keychain. He gave me this cross he made out of uh, ground wire. And he, he says, I want you to have this. And I said, well, why? And he goes, you saved my life. And I said, wow, <laughs> you know, I saved your life. How did I save your life? And he goes, I was on a job site and he stopped, went back to the truck, grabbed that GFCI because he remembered, he says, he goes, I remember you were talking about GFCI protection. You were talking about the cord and and the portable GFCIs that are out there. And he goes, and I knew I had it in the truck. So he says, I go back to the truck. I got it. Went out to the job site. He was working in some sort of pit or whatnot. He, He didn't really describe it that much. And he says he was in a position and he, he, uh, the tool failed. He was, uh, it was, it was energized. And he says the GFCI tripped and he goes, he was in a position where he could not, he would not have been able to let the tool go. And in his mind, he's sitting there saying, you saved my life. He goes, cause I would not have been thinking about it when I was out to that job site. And he gave me that little cross. And I, and I think about him every time I grab my keys because, I mean, that doesn't happen to you every day. Yeah. And I sat down and I think, you know, if that is the only time that that I could actually say what I do saved a life. Now, I don't know if, you know, you can't prove that you would, you would that he would not have, so, you know what I'm saying? You can't right. prove that you would not want to say, okay, let's go out and do that again. Right. But, but, you know, in your heart, you got to think, well, you know, maybe that did, maybe, maybe what you do makes a difference. And how many people don't tell you about it because it's that subliminal message in your head. Mm -hmm. You, you're not going to tie that to a discussion except (laughs) uh, what's her name. Um, Man, she was an admin uh, at, at uh, Eaton. She called me one day. It was, it was around Christmas and she was putting holiday lights on. And she says, I'm going to put holiday lights. I'm putting the lights out in the yard. She goes, can I do that? Is that safe? And I'm like, well, if you're plugged into a GFCI, I says, and make sure you have the right rated, you know, make to look at the lights, make sure it's rated for, for that application and all that. She goes, can you come over? I'm like, okay. So I went over and I had my tester and then I, uh, my indicator and I plugged it into the receptacle outside and it was not on GFCI protected. So I followed it back to the panel board. So I ran to the store, got her a GFCI. We put it in. Ran the tester, everything's good. We plugged the lights in, and I and I looked at the lights, and they were the right lights. And so I I go home, and she called me about two hours later, and she says, "Oh my God, you saved my life!" I'm like, like how did I save your life? And, and this and these were like relatively close together. Okay, right. So I'm like, okay, how, how did I do this? And she says, she has her back porch was that was wood wrapped in metal, or like uh, what do you call it? Um, it's like siding, but uh, aluminum, right? Right. So she says she's hanging her lights up and she was uh, nailing the lights on to the siding and she hit the wire and she says it tripped the GFCI. She goes, you saved my life. And I'm like, I, I can't, you know, you, you, you don't know if you did or not, but, you know, it's those little things where you go, okay, you know what, maybe... Maybe I did, you know, I'll be a hero for a day. I don't know, but you don't really know. But, and and she'll tell you because of what we do as an electrical manufacturer, because of all the education that we get and and everybody's aware of this. And she used to work in the residential products. And I know, you know, her and I knew each other because of uh, my time with GFCIs and ASCIs and things like that. And she thought about it. 
Mm-hmm. Is what I'm going to do, is this right? And then she knew to make a phone call to find somebody who might know. Yeah. And that's, I think, what training does. I like it to a, a culture. You know, you want that electrical worker guy to think about it. Mm-hmm. And then if, if you cause them to pause and go, I should go back to the truck and get my PPE. Right. You've done something because now at least they didn't just walk out to the job site and do whatever they did. They knew that, A, what I'm about to do is probably not going to be a good thing if I'm not protected. Yeah. So, and, and, and you can't measure that. Yeah. I wish I could. I wish I could. You could have like a little ticker. It's like, you know, from a safety perspective, they try to say uh, we should be measuring close calls. Well, what's a close call? Right. You don't know what a close, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to measure that stuff. Now, I mean, from, from a, from an aha moment, it's easier sometimes, I guess, well, I would assume it'd be easier when you're actually teaching a class in person. And like you said earlier, when you have that engagement and they're, they're back and forth, the class is taking over, you can, fit, you can see the aha happening, right? The, the dots are being connected. Exactly. So virtually it's harder to have that aha moment. So, I mean, do you have any signals or, 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 or moments that, that tell you that, hey, the, what you're teaching the audience, they, they got it? Yeah, the only place I can get that is like from a, like a chat box where people are starting to go, uh, either ask the right questions because I think asking questions is a good indicator right. that you're getting that person to think. You know, like like uh, I, I did a program on circuit breakers, and and it just just yesterday, last night, and um, right off the bat, I'm I'm getting a bunch of questions, right? So I'm, I'm now you know That's that it. the person came to that event or came to that program wanting to learn something because they've got questions in their head. So if you're getting questions, that means that whoever is asking the question is thinking. Yeah. You, you, you know, I, I agree. You, you, it's better to, to see the person and, and you know what happens you talk and then you take a break and you walk in the back and everybody's hovering around you. Hey, I want to ask you, want to ask you this, want to ask you that. Right. And I think that, the online experience facilitates that. They can ask that question and not have to wait to say, oh, I couldn't get, I couldn't get over there because there were three people asking the question or this one guy had a question and it took him 20 minutes to answer and then the break was over. You know, They could post those questions up there. So I, I, but I think people just need encouragement to do that because your name's associated with it, right? That's right. Okay, and, but, but I'm learning that um, you know, I look at the, on the chats on YouTube, I don't see, uh, I don't see Andy Thrower or Thomas Dimitrich or Chris Granger asking the question. I see Moby four, three, two, five, six, or, right. uh, you know, Jack Russell one, you know, all that good stuff. So you get the little handles mm-hmm. and that adds a little bit of an anim- anonymity and they can ask their question comfortably. Well, I mean, it sounds like to me engagement. I mean, if you if when you have that yeah. engagement from your audience, you're all over it. I mean, and, and that's when you know yeah. you're hitting. The, I am curious since you do so much live streaming, um, you know how how does that live out? So is it all through YouTube? Because I I noticed you go live on LinkedIn as well. So how, yeah, do, no, how does that work? So um, when I first went live, I learned how to do it with uh, Facebook. Okay, because. Facebook Live, they they like uh, I don't I, I don't know how they govern, and that they just basically said, hey, you can go live. I'm like, oh great, you know. So I would I would be in a this was even before COVID. I would go to our trade show, like at the I I Electrical Safety Workshop, and I had my phone, and I'd go, hey, we're live on Facebook, you know, and I talk to people, walk around the the show, and show people things who weren't at the show, and uh, or be in our Eaton booth, you know, and record stuff. Um, and then I learned how to go to YouTube, and then I learned that I can stream to them both. And at the same time, because you use a software, what you do is I, I have the software on my computer that sends it to a website. And then that web browser or that website sends it to the two separate channels. Hmm. So I'm only streaming one out of my house, and then it goes, and then that server sends it to two other locations. And then I got an email from LinkedIn and it said, Hey, you can go live if you want to on LinkedIn. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's like 
that's like giving an alcoholic a, a drink, man. I'm like, this is perfect. You know? So I, I started to stream to LinkedIn. So now um, I was going to try to only do YouTube because trying to monitor chats is like trying to mute people on, uh, on the live stream. Mm -hmm. But what I learned is I use this, uh, this site called Restream IO. And what they do is they'll stream to all three platforms and then whatever chats come in, they send them to you and display them all in one link. So now I can stream to all three. So I stream to, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And I will see the chats from YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook in one screen. So it makes my life easier. I don't have to, you know, you don't, you don't want somebody to ask a question and then you ignore them, right? Yeah. And then go, oh man, I didn't see that. On That's YouTube, that. does that live evergreen at, at once, it's, once you're done streaming? Yeah. So it's there for people, it's, if they search that topic, they could land there and yep. check it out? Absolutely. So they can, they can go out and I try to group them. So I'm starting to create, uh, I forget what they call it on YouTube, uh, like little groups of videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do is I like, I'll put all of my transformer discussions in one link, all of my power systems analysis in another mm -hmm. um, and, and motors in another. So I'm just trying to group them all. And I, and they, they're almost like playlists, you know, and I I've used them from other people's sites uh, where I just, you know, it, it goes from one video to the next and they're pretty much in a logical order. So so I've been trying to do that on that channel, uh, but but yeah, it, it'll stay up there until uh, until I take it down. So, and awesome. uh, you know, there are some that now. What I'll do also if I have like the one contractor wanted a private event and they like the YouTube environment because I think people can get it on their phones, they can mm -hmm. chat, and they don't have to worry about the microphone issues. So um, I do a private, a hidden video that it's not public, right. but it's still on my YouTube channel. And then I streamed it for that customer and we did the little Q and A thing and all that good stuff. And then I leave it up there and then they know about it and they share it with each other. Right, they have and, the link, uh, they can get it. Yeah, and it, but it's not out for the general public, That's you right. know, but you know, it, it, and that works too, so. That is so cool, Tom. I mean, it's just- Thanks. It's, you're, you're doing a, 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 just a great job. I mean, I, I love this topic of the skills gap and, and the, the ways that you're approaching it. I mean, just the two stories you gave us were, <laughs> it's proof that this yeah. stuff is working, man. And and sure so I tell you, we, we call it Eco Ask Why. It, it's the hardest show. Uh, and I love to get to, get your why on this, man, because you're such you're so passionate around this topic. Why do you think being proactive about helping others about you know learning power is so important to closing that skills gap that we're seeing? So the trades are a little different. The trades you have somebody who's coming in, uh, as an apprentice. I say a little different, but they'll they'll usually get in with an organization uh, who will you know if they, if you get with a company, they're going to tell you, okay, you're going to work under, uh, under this gentleman and, and, or this lady, and they will teach you. And they, you know, you start, you start with installing receptacles and work your way up. Right. From an engineering perspective, we leave college and people think that, well, you're an engineer, you know, everything. Right. Um, but you don't, you know, college teaches you to learn a mass amount of information in a short period of time. They teach, they teach you how to learn. And they give you a platform of uh, some of the basics, but they don't teach you code. They don't teach you the, the, the codes and standards, uh, a lot about the products and from an installation perspective um, what, and what a tradesman. So you've got to figure out, we as an industry have to figure out how do we take that individual and teach them what they need to know in a, and not wait for the on the job learning experience bring that on the job learning experience to them. You know, it's like this. It's, it's like, I wish that uh, Ford and Chrysler and GM, I wish the design engineers on the vehicle had to change their own oil, change their battery and do the own work, their own work on the vehicle. Because when you're sitting there working on a vehicle, you're scratching your head thinking, what was this guy thinking? Look where they put the oil filter. I can't even get my hand in there. I can't get a tool in there, right? So it's that type of concept to say, can we can we bridge the gap with technology to expedite the, the, the transfer of knowledge between trades 
from the seasoned person to the younger person, right? Because we've got a lot of seasoned people mm -hmm. that are probably going to get ready to leave the workforce if they're not already in that mode. And you've got a lot of young people coming in and we need a transfer of knowledge. For sure. For you sure. know, and that's the hard part. You know, what happens, you take your, you, any company, you take your, your seasoned guy and he says, Hey, I'm retiring. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go buy a house in, in Arizona and, and enjoy life. And then you gotta think, well, what about all these other guys? I mean, you took that, you took that, I just had, uh, I'm an HVAC guy here today. You know, Bill, he comes out to the house. We, we had a guy in yesterday who thought we fixed the problem, but he, he didn't fix it. Now Bill came out and Bill's the seasoned guy. He's the manager. He's, uh, he comes out and he's like, okay. He goes, my sharpest guy couldn't figure this out and we're going to figure it out. And he spent three hours here and we think we got it solved. And now when Bill retires, then what? Then what? That's right. You know, so we got to transfer that knowledge. And, and when it comes to safety, I think we've done a lot of good from a safety perspective. Sure. Just if you think about like when I was, when I was young, literally, well, we, we had, my uncle had a contract business when he wasn't working in the steel mill. And we had a drill that we used on the job site. It was, you know, I'm talking, you know, seventies, right. And, and, and it was an old drill then. So it was all metal. And it was one of those drills that you, you had to tweak the, uh, the cord to get it to go. Okay. Right. And if you tweaked it wrong, you got it to go, boy. I mean, you got a nice jolt of 120 volts, right? Right. So we had that drill on the job site and uh, we'd get another relative, you know, one of our cousins to come help us, you know, or in something. And we would sit down and, and we'd go, hey, you know, I need you to drill some holes. Here's the drill. And we would sit back and watch <laughs> until he got it, right? <laughs> and and it, you think back at it now, wow, we were putting lives in, you know, something serious could have happened sure and we were playing with it right yeah you wouldn't do that on a job site today right i would i wouldn't do that i wouldn't get in a car without putting my seatbelt on right uh today because we're changing that culture yeah you know and 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 that's something those bad habits aren't the things you want transferred right, right. that's right <laughs> you want the uh the troubleshooting skills uh and all of that knowledge transferred but you want that younger uh, worker, that younger engineer is just coming into the industry to understand the right safety principles. That's how you change culture. That's it. But well, Tom, this is this is great. I mean, you're doing a phenomenal job again. You know, and, and and we'll make sure in our show notes for our listeners and and all, everything is there. All the links to check your YouTube, Facebook, cool. LinkedIn, everything there. You know, oh, you know what I just did <laughs> last Friday. I needed a calendar. I created my own website, thomasdimitrovich.com. Okay. We'll, we'll, ha <laughs> I, <laughs> we'll have it there, man. We'll have it there for the, the listeners to go straight there and connect with you. That's it. awesome. That is I outstanding. Well, this has been great, Tom. I mean, thank you Appreciate so much. It. And and a wonderful guest, a wonderful idea. And I know you connect the dots for so many people. And uh, I know once they start following you, you'll be helping them even more. So we, we thank you for coming on and hope you have a wonderful day, sir. I appreciate it, Chris. I appreciate what you do too. So it's all part of the, we're all working together. That's it, man. Thank you so much. Sure thing. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 